Uh, we got um, the we got the 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 Nick Cannon. They done canceled Nick Cannon. No, they mm-hmm. didn't. Can let's 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 all right. So let's go to what happened. So Nick Cannon got fired from Viacom. A lot of people don't know that Viacom owns a lot of the companies: BET, MTV, um, MTV VH1. VH1. Yep. They, <clears throat> yeah, they're getting to a different type of bag. So Viacom fired Nick Cannon for making anti-Semitic remarks about. Well, of course, anti-Semitic means anti-Jewish people. Um, so I had to honestly, I had to look it up for myself because I didn't know what anti-Semitic mean. I thought it was just racial comments when it's not. It's actually directed to Jewish people, right? So when I when I at first before I understood the word anti-Semitic, right, I was like, what he said seems like it made sense, and I feel like it's there is out there that that's cool. I mean, that's about it. I went to social media and everybody was talking about the savage thing and white people. In Viacom's write-up, they didn't say anything about racial remarks about white people. They said anti. They very was. They was very clear about anti-Semitic. And even though I think Nick Cannon was right, but given his his opinion, what I will say is it was anti-Semitic. You get what I'm saying? Did he apologize to Viacom like he said he did? I don't know. Um, so a lot of us have, have a problem with he had. He doubled down. He went on on his Twitter or Instagram and just said that he he demands um wilding out back. We're gonna get to that because that's a topic in itself. Um he said that he, he reached out to them to apologize. Nobody answered the phone. They didn't want to have a conversation. But then he doubled back down what the next day or two days after and apologized. People are trying to cancel cancel Nick Cannon because he went back and apologized like why not just stand on your own too? The thing my opinion is my man Nick Cannon is a, is taking care of a lot of people. So when it start, it's like it's, it's easy to be like, you know, this is my beliefs and I'm gonna stand on what I believe in. But when you're funding this person family, this person family, and so more and so more, you gotta be cognizant or aware of the people that you're feeding and who they're feeding. So it's like, yo, you know what? To put my pride to the side, yeah, I apologize so I can keep funding other people. That's how I see it. What I just think, think that um, when, the, when the Cannon decided to have a podcast, and he decided to speak out. I just thought it was a risk that he knew yep. he was going to get. And so I feel like when you put yourself out there and you risk yourself in those ways, I also feel like you kind of know it's still a low risk that that can happen if you say something and you're unapologetically being yourself. And I'm not saying Viacom is right. Um, what I will say is I do agree where he would apologize to Jews because he has Jews friends and he doesn't want to offend his friends and you want to clear it up. I get that apology. I do think the apology was a little more, I don't want to call it beggy, like, or like, you know, you know, it kind of looks like he did go back on what he said. And we're and I think you can kind of do both. I think you can apologize to the people that you love, that you care about, because you do have Jews that you're friends with. Like, I wasn't trying to offend you, and I apologize for that. But I do think you should stand on what you say, because at the end of the day, you have this podcast for a reason. You are trying to get knowledge out there. You are studying in and taking these courses to be more knowledgeable on, you know, theory and backgrounds and history of every race so at that point you knew what you were getting yourself into so stand on that like if you are making that like commitment to yourself to lead people and to show them history and this is a part of the history that you're putting out there whether it is liked or not stand on that because that's if that if that's your purpose and that's why you feel like you were put in here to giving that voice to do do it whether and it's going to be a it is going to be a risk you're going to lose something now you didn't know you were going to lose the biggest thing Right. You know what I'm saying? But it was a risk you knew ultimately. And it does give your people kind of a slap in the face because they look to you as this leader. They're watching your podcast and like, yeah, Nick Cannon, thank you for standing up for us. Thank you for doing your research. And then you go back and be begging and go apologize as if like you're going back on what you said. No, apologize to your peers, but you cannot go back on what you said. So what I was going to ask is, um, do we have the uh, post about, uh, was it Fox? Because he works for Fox doing the um, Unmatched thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Didn't they say, they said they decided to keep, yeah, they're uh, gonna keep him. apologetic Nick that was exactly their words. Wow. They was going to keep apologetic Nick Cannon. So it wasn't what, wow. them that said it like that. That's how they spun the, okay. the, yeah. the story. That's okay. So the, now the, what I was thinking headlines. was maybe he did that to keep his job with Fox. Um, 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know the truth in that. But I was like, if that's true, I can see like, yo, I'm trying to keep my bag. Yeah. You know well, maybe saying? people should be more prepared when they start doing this. And I just think like, if if you knew you were going out here and you these were risks and you wanted to, you should have been in a situation kind of before you decide. Like the thing is, again, celebrities forgetting their power. And it's just like Nick Cannon, you're Nick Cannon. You really can't go out here just saying anything. And if you do decide to do that and you want to do that, you, you better be, be you got to be prepared. Like, yeah. yo, y'all could drop me from there. I'm Gucci. I ain't worried. And that goes into the it conversation. Got, like, My bad. No, I mean, I, to segue a little bit. I think the biggest thing out of this, though, is the conversation of ownership. In exact, black exactly. Exactly. What I was about to go to. Exactly. The reason why I say that is because a lot of people were talking about, oh, Netflix and uh, uh, BET. Well, he shouldn't have to well, go nowhere. Formal. He exactly. shouldn't be able he to do his own thing. But more thing. importantly, when people say BET, they are Firecom owns yeah. BET. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't, don't even know. know that. Yeah, they don't know. But why I bring that up is because it was black owned at one point. And too often yeah. what we see is like as we move up when we have our big businesses, yeah. somebody throws a number at us that we've never seen. And it's yeah. like instead of us doing the work and staying that path, it's like, all right, bet, let me yeah. cash out right now. Uh, so it speaks to like the fact that Diddy could respond and be like, we are black owned. You know, that right. that was a sense of encouragement. So right. the thing about the like, thing come about over here to revolt, baby. And right. I fuck but, with Diddy so, for that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm gonna say why. I'm gonna just say why. So that, that goes though. that goes right. That goes into the conversation of I thought while and I was the that niggas like I, I like too. when he demand, demanded ownership, I'm like, wait, hold up. It's not yours? Maybe it's a piece of his and he want all of it. I don't know. Yeah, no, he said hundred percent. He just wants hundred percent. Right. Of it. So So it's kinda like a partnership. Right. right so because that, he did it on M T V, which is right. you know, at the time I think, you know, Wild and Out has been out for a long time now. Yeah. At the time M T V was what it was like M T V didn't without Wild and Out now, M T V don't have the ratings. But at that time when Wild and Out was given to MTV, it did have the rating he needed. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, let's do partnership. So it's like, it's also one of those things is before he built up to, it built up to what it was now, you know, it was a smart decision. Yeah. And I think that's just where, it, sometimes that just happens. Like it starts off to be a good decision, but then what happens is before these things happen, it wasn't like, you know what? I think I want to take hundred percent ownership now or like let's renegotiate. And a, this situation. A like, lot you know of times, I mean? you don't, yeah. even just from being in <clears throat> nowhere near that magnitude, right? But, but being in a similar situation, your eyes see the potential in it. And a lot of times, the potential ain't what you think it is. So, for example, when I was with a company, I wanted my, I wanted to transfer my, my content from my page to their page because I'm thinking the company is bigger than me. Mm-hmm. So, I'm thinking that my content will get so m- more many views and it, it, will, it will put me in a better situation when in actuality, what yeah. I was bringing to yep. the table actually helped the company more yep. than they helped me, yep. honestly. So a lot of times we in these situations like, yo, damn, I got this great, this great chance to, mm-hmm. to build with this huge company and I can be almost equal, if not equal, in the long run. Right. And then something like this happened and you see how much power or right. how much influence you actually brought right. to the table. Right. And I think that might be a, a situation I don't know mm-hmm. again, but it's just... It's, it's easier to said than done. Like, you got to understand. And, and yeah. I think mm-hmm. this situation makes Nick Cannon more stronger because he is in a situation that he learned. And now yeah. he'll go about it totally right. different in, a, in, right. a, in the next run. Um, but um, the one thing I didn't like about it, though, like, I'm off this shit. Like, he made some tweets like, y'all can have Earth. I'm leaving the planet. Like, <sighs> stop it. Like, you're going to stop it. You're going to stop that. You still have this influence. You're still saying careless things. Like, it's real people who are suicidal out here, bro, like, that yeah. kill themselves every single freaking day. When you go say things like that with the influence you have, you are telling people when things get bad, fold. Don't do that. Right. That's don't do that. Yeah. And I don't like that. Like, that, that, I was, I'm pro Nick Cannon, but once he did that, I'm like, you're careless. It's kind of corny. I literally said you're careless. Yeah, it's kind of corny. It's like, yo, I if you want to take a step careless. back, and we're like, granted, I can't tell nobody mm-hmm. how to make this disclaimer. I can't tell nobody how to cope with whatever it can be. But if you want to step back and take some time to learn and and take a step back, like you said you was, do that. Right. Don't come back and say these things. Because once you say, I'm going to leave Earth, no matter, because he could he could mean something totally different. He could mean in a mental state of mind. He could mean in a spir- spiritual well, state of mind. To be clear. Right. But because you're not clear, the next person that you influence might not understand it fully and when they get a situation they might take the oh, same yeah, approach so it's like that's the norm or that's right. what you know even the biggest of the biggest do it so i'm not you know exempt from it like it's like no like don't do that speaking on that mm-hmm. i wanted to go let's 